A little over a week ago, Nintendo shut down the Wii U and 3DS eShops, and along with it, thousands of games became unobtainable, even the free ones. The eShop legit just isn't there anymore. Sure, you can buy physical versions of a lot of these games used, but all that money is going to resellers. And in a lot of cases, for a prohibitively jacked up price point. Some of these games, and pretty much all of their DLC, have become completely unobtainable. There is now no storefront to obtain some of these games legitimately. But what about illegally? What about crime? It's not long enough, I can't do it. We talk a lot about emulation here, and there are now a ton of awesome channels that have a heavy focus on emulation, but almost none of them dive into the topic of where or how to get these games or the morality of piracy. And you know what? I don't blame them. It's a touchy subject. They don't want to get in trouble. I don't want to get in trouble either. But I'm going to go ahead and talk about both of those things today. So I might get in a little bit of trouble because I recently just found something that some of you guys probably already know about. It's called the H shelf and it took me around a minute to put it on my 3DS, and now it's opened me up to basically any game that I want. I wanna issue a warning here. Piracy is illegal, okay? But how would you like me to obtain Pushmo now, Nintendo? Box Boy, Mario vs. Donkey Kong, Pokemon Red? You won't let me buy some of your most popular games. What did you think was gonna happen? You think I'm just gonna let my 3DS turn into a useless brick? You should absolutely only obtain the ROMs for games that you already own. But what if they leave you no choice? You want something and they say you can't have it. Why? This video is sponsored by Factor. Hey, what you doing? Just playing around with my new 3D printer. It's incredible, I can just make whatever I want. What are you making now? Just a cup. So you could print anything? Yep. So you're making a cup. Uh huh. Do we have to sit here and stare at it or can we leave? Oh, we can leave whenever we want. Okay, do you want to get food? No. Okay. So how long is it gonna take? Like about three-ish hours. Are you sure you don't want Shh. it? I'm watching this thing. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I didn't. I didn't have no idea. Yeah, we all have a lot going on. You can use Factor to help you get your mind off of meal time. Factor meals arrive pre-prepared and ready to eat in two minutes, which is perfect for busy lifestyles. I like it because I can just walk over to my fridge and grab a healthy meal that's ready to go. It's perfect for when I'm busy just staring at stuff all day. And you can try it for yourself by going to factor75.com or clicking the link in the description below and use code YAHUNGRY50 for a whole 50% off your first Factor box. I gotta check out this cup. You know, this only took me two minutes to make, by the way. Shh, it just finished. Hey, weren't you gonna make a cup? Yeah, I did. Um, that's a frog. Ah, damn it. You know I always get those two confused. Oh, is this lime? If you follow me over on TikTok or even listen to the Nintendo podcast that I'm a part of, you've probably heard me talk about stuff like this before, but here I'm talking about it on my biggest platform, YouTube. How you guys doing? I'm Bob. I like to talk about crime. Honestly, this isn't really something that I'd like to draw too much attention to. The emulation industry is booming and I've been loving it and I'm sure you guys have been loving it too. Emulators allow you to play games without having the physical copy. The loophole is that you can rip your physical copy that you legally own and put the file on an emulator, just like you could rip a CD back in the day and put the files on your MP3 player. I have some videos on how to do this. It also works for ripping and transferring save files, which is super convenient. Let's be honest, nobody's doing that. Even if you own the game already legally, it's still just much easier to download the ROM off of the internet. We've all done it before. People always ask me where I get my ROMs from because they expect it to be some like haven of just piracy, but really 
All I do is Google the name of the game that I want and then put ROM download at the end. And it's usually the first link and you just gotta dodge a bunch of nefarious download links and you'll, you'll figure it out. You're a smart guy. But even if you own a game, it's still a crime to download it off the internet. It's not a loophole. That's not how things work. You can't just walk into a 7-Eleven, buy a Snickers, and then grab another one on the way out. It's still stealing. The reason emulators are legal is thanks to a court case that happened in the year 2000 where Sony tried to sue a company that made a PlayStation emulator and they lost. So thanks Sony for that. Having an emulator isn't the issue, it's having all of those digital games that you didn't legally obtain. That's the issue. I probably shouldn't be holding this because I'm pretty sure this came with a bunch of games that I didn't legally obtain. It is illegal to download a game, even if it's commercially unavailable. But is it necessarily morally wrong? I would say it's morally neutral. No one's being hurt by that. It's neither good nor bad. The rights holders aren't selling the product anymore, so who are we stealing from? Sometimes rights holders do this to drum up hype over their IP. It's the Disney Vault Syndrome. That's a whole load of horse <laughs> There have been multiple studies over the years proving that the people who pirate the most video games and movies are the ones who are spending the most money on these media. We don't pirate because we love crime. We do it because we want access to all of the stuff that we love. Oh yeah, that study's real. In fact, it's been done many times in many different areas, movies, games, stuff like that. And when asked to detail their spending habits, the people who identified as pirates ended up spending more. They're also more likely to have subscription services like Netflix. Social executive Paul Briley had this to say. The reality is the majority of people who have gone through the effort of finding and accessing such unlicensed content are first and foremost fans. Fans who are more often than not trying to get the content legally if they can. So pirates also tend to be your biggest fan base. If you give us access to these legacy games on newer platforms, we will buy them. Probably multiple times. Don't ask me how many copies of Sonic Adventure 2 that I have. If you watch the Nintendo podcast, you've heard all of this stuff already, and I'm sorry for reiterating it. If you don't watch that and you'd like to hear more about this, we had a nice long conversation all about piracy over there. You can check that out. I'm sorry it took so long to get into the nitty gritty here, but I had to do all of that preface just so I can start talking about piracy on the 3DS, because I want to make it clear that this is still very much a perform at your own risk thing. But now that the 3DS eShop is done for, we can like kind of do this with a clear conscience now. Kind of. So having a hacked 3DS is now more useful than ever. Hacking a 3DS is so easy, there's a whole meme around it. I have a video I did about a year ago praising how easy it was. You should check that out as a preface, but if you want to perform it yourself, you can check out an updated guide at 3ds.hacks.guide. Some guy always comments on all my stuff that you should always use written guides and never video tutorials because video tutorials often get out of date pretty easily. And that's true, I understand, but I'm a visual learner. I think it's okay to use video guides as supplemental material to the written guide. So you should start with the written guide and then if you get stuck on something, then you can reference either mine or like Blaine Locklear's video. Hacking your 3DS will allow you to put homebrewed software on there. If you did a hack similar to the one that I did, you will automatically have a feature where you can just dump a ROM that you own right onto your micro SD card. So I can just put my entire library of DS and 3DS games right onto my 3DS's micro SD card. That way I will always have my entire library of games with me on this one device. You can also borrow some games from a friend and put them all on your 3DS. Wouldn't that be fun? That's great for the digital versions of physical games that you might already own or have access to, but what about the over 1,000 digital games and their DLC that just got blipped out of existence last week when the 3DS eShop went down? What are we gonna do about those? Well, luckily, that's where the H-Shop comes in.
Hello? The 3DS is a great piece of hardware, but the boot times are very 2011. The 8 Shop is basically a pirate storefront that has 3DS games, DSiWare, Virtual Console, DLC, updates, and a whole bunch of stuff that's been lost to time. It's got a lot of stuff. I'm not sure if it has everything, but it has everything that I tried to find. Games like Kirby Planet Robobot don't show up under the North America region, but it did show up under Region Free. So if you don't see it at first, check the Region Free category. And since my 3DS was hacked already, it was like the easiest thing in the world to put on here. It took me around a minute total. All you have to do is Google H Shop. I'm afraid to put a link anywhere, but you'll find it pretty easily. Then just download the 3hs.caa file, pop it on your micro SD card, open up FBI, open that 3hs.caa file, and boom, you have access to thousands of games. Wood, you have Sushi Striker, right? You can let me borrow it. On what? Uh, DS, 3DS? No. You have it, right? No, I'd say you do, though, for the video. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, thank you so much, thank you. One of the games that I've been having a lot of fun with is New Super Mario Bros. 2. Now, I played this back in the day when it came out, and I remember I didn't really like it that much. But thanks to Gerard's video, where he bought every single 3DS and Wii U game and their DLCs, I learned that this game had some DLC that is now unavailable. The only way to get those DLC levels now would be to purchase a new Super Mario Bros. 2 limited edition 3DS console that comes with the game and the DLC preloaded on it already. You gotta buy that on eBay for whatever marked up price it's going for. That bundle is the only way to access these DLC levels, unless you have the H shop. Three of these levels are some of the hardest official Nintendo levels I have ever played in my life. No! <laughs> the Virtual Console on the 3DS was one of the biggest losses that we suffered when the eShop went down last week. Nintendo has been very bad at porting some of their legacy games over to newer consoles, namely the Pokemon games. Under the Virtual Console section in the region free category, they're all there, baby. And they even work with Pokemon Bank, and this is currently only obtainable through the H Shop. That's just how much this hacker initiative saved the 3DS. There's also system apps like Netflix, so you can watch movies on here again. Oh, never mind. This continued. So, <laughs> no, no watching movies on here. Watch Succession somewhere else or whatever. And also a library of ROM hacks. I love me some Mario ROM hacks, and there's plenty here, but I know a lot of people love Pokemon ROM hacks. There's even a Mario 64 3DS port. Even the Star Road ROM hack ported to the 3DS is on here. It's incredible what we have access to, and it all just downloads over Wi-Fi and shows up on your home screen ready to go, just like you downloaded it off of the eShop. Imagine downloading Star Road off of the eShop. This is only possible thanks to the years of ROM dumping that pirates have been doing. Without that, we would have lost access to all of these games when they shut down the eShop. The only other way to preserve all of these games would be if some psycho decided to just buy every single 3DS game that was available on the eShop and all of its DLC before the eShop got shut down. But that would take so much money and so much time to do all of that. Oh wait, Gerard did it. That's just a sample of the insane lengths that we have to go through just to preserve video game history or just to have access to the games that we love, the things that we wanna try. There's so many things out there that were released throughout the years that we didn't get a chance to try at the time and we wanna try now. We gotta jump over all of these hurdles because for some reason, Nintendo wants to put hurdles in our way to access their games. We just want to play the stuff that you have as fans. Just let me buy Pokemon Red for the third time. I'm trying to give you $40 here. I just ask that you use some discretion here. Just because you can download every game in existence doesn't mean that you should. Some games are available elsewhere and easily accessible. Games like Shovel Knight are on the H Shop, 
but you can buy that literally anywhere. If you can support the developer, you absolutely should. And this goes double for indie devs. This is why I'm afraid to talk about this stuff because people are gonna run rampant and start downloading everything all willy nilly. You're gonna ruin it for the rest of us. And this is why I don't like to talk about emulating games and consoles that are currently available and easy to get to. Like Switch emulation is, is still a touchy subject for me because a lot of the stuff that I see people emulating are indie games because those are the easiest to run on little Android devices. And that feels really sad to me. But now there's literally nothing else you can do. They gave you no choice. I guess, I guess you gotta do this now. And when our big corporate overlords finally do grace us with their legacy games on newer platforms, when they finally do give us access to this stuff, reward them with your hard earned dollars. Like I do with Sega every time they re-release Sonic Adventure 2. So what do you guys think about the 3DS eShop going down and how the pirates are, are keeping this thing alive? Maybe you recently just got a 3DS somehow and you've been playing it and loving it. And now all of a sudden the support has been ripped out from underneath you. Now you gotta rely on some homebrew people to keep it afloat. What do you think about that? Leave in the comments below, at me on Twitter, any and all of this other social media garbage. Unless you're a publisher or developer, just go straight to my lawyers. I don't have a lawyer. Do you guys know any lawyers? Thank you, Factor, for helping sponsor this video. Don't forget to check them out at the link in the description below. I stream on twitch.tv slash wolfden all the time, usually at night. I'm taking Mario Maker submissions that I'll be playing on this Sunday. You gotta give me the submission before that so we can vet the levels and stuff. Go into my Twitch chat, type in exclamation point, submit level, and, and you'll see it. But of course, the most important thing that you guys can do to help support this channel is just subscribe right here. Turn on those notifications if you wanna know when every single one of these videos goes live and share this video with a friend, a friend who maybe just got a 3DS and wants to get some use out of it now. Thank you very much. Have yourself a good week.